What's going on, y'all? It's Breaking the Colonel, Garrett, and then you have Albert. And Thank you, Gary. We, uh, interesting. So something really interesting I want to start the show off with, right, is disc editions for the PS5 make up 82% of all console sales. For real? I found that very interesting. I didn't know that. Where did you get that from? Found... This one in particular is InsideGaming.com. <coughs> Inside Gaming, huh? Yeah, InsideGaming.com. Now, when it comes to numbers like this, and I won't be biased. I'm a, first of all, everyone knows me knows I'm a huge physical media stand. With that being said, I always like to give these numbers a couple of percent. So I, I like to play with like 5 to 10% off. So I go like 5 10% less than whatever they're saying. So it says 82%. Mm-hmm. I believe it, but I would like to... I, I give a 5 10% cushion. I'll go as low as 5 here because... I feel like it makes sense because, again, on the PS2 or PS5, sorry, you can play PS4 games. So I'm assuming a lot of people, like, we know for a fact that almost 50% of all online active users for PlayStation Network are people who have PS4s. So Owen goes to assume that. A lot of people have discs because there's no... Well, is there a digital version? No, there's no digital only version for PS4, right? I don't think so. Mm. So, all those people have discs. So, unless they get all unless all those discs were able to be traded in for digital copies, they're going to have to use a disc drive for uh, the console. And yes, can they buy a digital only and then get the disc drive? Sure. But why would anyone do that? <laughs> like that why would anyone do that that didn't... Uh, at least when the PS5 first came out. I feel like it's no... That's a weird reason. And for people who need a disk drive or want the disk drive. So I mm-hmm. believe these numbers. Um, and I guess my question to you is, do you think, because, you know, the, so I say I'll let it bounce it off to like uh, the PS5 Pro. Not the anniversary edition. That's been that's been sold out like as soon as it dropped. The PS5 Pro edition, regular one, has not sold out. Now it's been trending on Amazon. To be fair, it's been trending on Amazon. as one of the highest selling consoles or pre-orders for a console on Amazon, hmm, but through PlayStation, through Best Buy, through Walmart, through you know anywhere you can buy a console at, it's not. Sold it's out. not selling. No, no, Nearly no, no, no. Well. no. Okay, Nearly as well. Right. Nearly as well. Because I mean, let's be let's keep it a bean. Let's keep. We we saw the 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 horrendous. You know, launch for the PS5. Now, obviously, we're not in that kind of crunch with COVID and all this, all the situations right. right now. But there still is a pro console. There still is a PS5. Half the users are still playing on the PS4, which means they have not upgraded yet. So this will be a perfect time to upgrade. And it is holiday season coming up, so I'm very. I mean, as as we're making this video, the PS5 Pro comes out in like two weeks. <laughs> it's like it's coming out like very quickly. It's not like a thing. It's coming out very soon. So, I guess my question to you is like, what do you what do you think? What do you, what? Why do you think people are not buying into this PS Five Pro right now? Like, what? what where's the hype going? So, okay, the question is, why do I? Okay, so I think you're basing your question off of it not being sold out, and I think a lot of people are looking at it and saying to themselves, it's not sold out like the PS Five sold out. That must mean it's not in demand or as much in demand, or it's not as sought after or it's not as um, it's not as good so I mean I understand that 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 train of thought but I would say huh I would say it's not going to be as hyped as the PS5 because it's not a new console it's, it's a new version of an existing console so like it's not a new generation it's not PS6 you know so it's not going to be as much hype like I don't think there was as much hype for PS4 Pro as there was for PS4 like, I don't think there was as much hype, like, you know, going from PS3 to PS4, that was big. Going from PS4 to PS4 Pro was like, uh, you know, if you have a 4K TV, I guess, kind of thing. I feel like it's like that. So, like, I don't think people should expect the same level of um, pandemonium over a PS4, over a Pro console versus the next generation of consoles, you know. So that's that's my opinion. And I think people saying, like, oh, you can actually buy one now. Like, it's not sold out. It's not, like, a bunch of scalpers. It's not a bunch of bots. It's not a bunch of people selling the regular PS5 Pro for, like, $1,000 on eBay or $5,000 on eBay. That must mean it sucks. So that must mean it's not selling. That must mean it's failing. No, I don't think so. 
A, because of what I just said, and then two, because um, Sony, we're not in a pandemic, so they could have actually beefed up the supply to meet the demand. That's one. So if they beefed up the supply to meet the demand, and then it's not going to be sold out. They're going to have enough to sell through the holiday season, which is what it should be. That's what it should be, even if a console is in demand. It just didn't happen the first time because of COVID. So I think that's not really going to be indicative of how successful how successful is going to be that's my opinion so yeah no i think those are two valid good valid points um it can still fail because, though, don't get me wrong but yeah go ahead oh yeah you could but but uh no i think it's i think it's two valid those are two valid points <clears throat> i i think it, one so i i i kind of on the opposite train of and don't get me wrong i own a playstation 5 people i am not i the only reason why i would root for this to fail is for the sole reason that I think fully digital, like fully digital, no choice is what this is trying to lead to. And it's a very dumb decision. Um, especially since again, 50% of your user base still has discs, which means if you do the PS and they haven't bought the PS five and they're probably just going to skip out of it at this point, if it's 50%, hmm? 50 percent, what's the static percent of what? People are active after uh, PlayStation Online users mm-hmm. have a PS are playing on PS4, not a PS5. Fifty percent, bro. A lot of people. It's a lot of people, and I got this from multiple <laughs> sources. So Damn. that's what we did the episode a couple of weeks ago. I gotta look that up. I, I didn't know. Uh, I thought it was like maybe a third. Fifty percent. No, no, no. A lot of people. A lot Sheesh. of people. Okay. And I say that, and again, like I said, I like to give five, ten percent less than what those numbers usually are, because, like we said the other time, I believe, like, what does active use? Like, you know, there's certain there's certain little little tidbits with that, but either way, that's I would say like a lot, around forty percent is still a forty anything forty plus anything thirty plus is 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 crazy, but damn near fifty percent of your audience or active users are using the PS4. Now, granted, that could mean they're just using it as like a Blu-ray player still. There could just be like, you know, or that's what they intended to use it for because the PS4 came out a long time ago when people mm-hmm. were still buying like Blu-ray players. So it could be like, you know, oh, we just use it for that. There's no need to upgrade. That is a possibility. That's the same thing I have with the PS3. People bought it for just, or sorry, PS2, PS3. People just bought it for that reason. Um, to, mm-hmm. Like DVDs and then like obviously PS3 with the Blu-ray player. So there is that that aspect and you do have to create like a profile on your ps4 anyway so now would you have ps plus probably not but you never know like people can get into gaming that way so i'm just going to put a certain percentage of that into that category that still leaves an overwhelming amount and i feel like to go fully digital which uh, for obvious reasons are trying to do it if your people have not transitioned to the ps5 yet and it's been long enough where people can get it if they want to introducing a more Mm -hmm. expensive console is not going to get people who thought five hundred dollars too much. They're definitely not going to jump on seven hundred and something plus dollars, especially an extra eighty dollars to get their right. um disc drive. Now, again, I only the one the only reason why I wish they did a disc drive version of the PS Five Pro, why? like disc drive included, is I would like to see the numbers, um, to see if people would have bought that. That's what I would have. I would have been interested <clears> to see <throat> that because again, a lot of their user base still have physical discs. So if people were going to upgrade, it would be the disk drive version. And the fact that it's just not attached is going to be just bitter people. And also, it's just annoying to have to spend $80 or whatever it is for that. And then plus the cover and then all the other stuff. So it would have been interesting to see that. Um, but I do have an announcement to make that's interesting. All right. I am no longer... And you're, you're going to find this interesting. I'm no oh, longer what? Team Cannon. Sony. I, tr- I transitioned to Sony as of today. Yeah, smart man. As of- smart man. <laughs> Something today. Good for you. You finally learned what the rest of the world learned. You just ca- you just caught on leap. Congratulations. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, man. Nah, uh, so I transitioned to Sony camera. So I thought this would be interesting to bring into this. I transitioned to Sony camera because... One, the glass, meaning lenses for Canon, were pretty expensive. Not that they're not expensive for Sony, but there's a lot of different uh, variety that I found that I liked, especially um, some old school lenses I saw too. There's like a lot of just different things I saw. I also like the color science a little better. I like the 
that can shoot damn near in a black hole and see the light. Like I like those different aspects. I actually, I actually do like street photography and shooting, mm. uh, and all, all kinds of other stuff at night. Like I really like neon lights and being do this stuff like that. And now that you cannot do that on Canon, kind of R6 Mark II. I had a very, it was a beast. It was a full frame beast. I made a movie off of it, everything. It's a fantastic camera. But I wasn't using it to the capabilities because I was using that EF lens as a whole different thing. And I just wanted to try to experiment with different uh, brands because I want to start shooting um, sports events and stuff like that. And I really like how the Sony camera operates during sports events. I see that as the standard that what a lot of sport teams use. So I just want to familiarize myself with that uh, system. So I was like, you know what? Instead of just renting the camera, let me just go buy that camera. Let me sell my Canon. I sold my Canon. I was like, let me go buy the Sony. Let me experiment with that. I also want to tiptoe into Fuji cameras because I like the color signs with their photos. I'm not going to use it for video, but just for photos. That's a whole mm-hmm. different thing. But I know you have experience with because a lot, a couple of our friends have like Sony cameras, mm-hmm. and I just think you, I thought you would appreciate that transition yeah, to yeah, come on over, Sony, come on over. <laughs> Sony cameras. That's where um, it's at. That's what's. That's why most content creators today they have Sony cameras, man. It's not. A, it's not a. Uh, it's not a secret. Like they're just the best. And you finally realize it. So yeah, good. We'll see. I'm, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna test it out. We're, we're gonna see. Hopefully, I didn't make a huge life altering mistake. Um, but to get into the meat of this episode, it is the top five most influential <clears throat> video games for us personally. So you have a top five list. I have a top five list. You haven't heard mine. I haven't heard yours. Mm-hmm. We're going to kick it off with you. Give us your top five and why. It doesn't have to be in order, but if you have an order, that's cool too. But go ahead. No, Floor's no yours. order. But um, just so I'm clear, so this is the top five most influential video games of my life so this is based on my personal experience this is not exactly an all-time this ranking not for world. like yeah. all the okay all the video you can games. factor that in you can factor that in i can but factor that in but it's my opinion yeah right? it's that's like the last experience. thing okay. it doesn't really matter all right yeah no particular order i'm gonna list my five and then go through the reasons yeah uh, no particular order mario 64 and 64 super mario 64 okay uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 on the PS2. Um, Metal Gear Solid on the PS1. Okay. The, the first one. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Um, the first Call of Duty Modern Warfare when they went modern. Uh, I think 2008, I think, on Xbox 360 and PS3. And the last one. That's my five. So reasons okay. why, and I'll try to make it sweet. Super Mario 64, I had never seen anything like that before. It's, it's like just going to 3D and him jumping through the paintings and running through the mansion and being able to fly and um, just how they really fleshed out the 2D Mario that we know with all the characters and the Koopas and everything and really giving them um, a, a new life. In 3D. Seeing that as a kid, as a little kid, you know, being six seven years old going into towards the rest and seeing that for the first time i never forgot that experience that that feeling i got when i saw that just blown away by the graphics uh so that's that's mario 64 uh, gta 3 on the uh what was it right New York. so that was um on, that was a game that my parents it's probably because like it was so many parents that were trying to ban the game and then my mom was like i'm not buying you that game so i had to like finesse to get my dad to buy it but not tell her and then i had to like get good grades so he can get it for me and then sneak it in and then when my mom came home i had to make sure i turned the game off and hit it under the bed like i saw i had to play gta 3 but i liked it so much because like yeah it was like that like <laughs> i wasn't supposed to be playing that game when i was 11 years old but um just the fact that like not the violence and all that, but just the fact that, like, you could, like, steal a car. And not just you stole a car, but you could flip through radio stations. And they had, like, real radio True. stations. And, like, the songs, they had real music on there. And then, like, they had fake talk shows, but it was really funny. And, like, being a kid and hearing, like, all these, uh, all the pop culture and hearing, like, the social commentary, it was just crazy to me. The, the world felt so lived in because of that, because of the music, the talk show, the radio station really sticks out when I when I um, think about Grand Theft Auto 3. It's just how the world felt. And uh, the billboards, the advertisements, the just people, um, the conversations on the, when, you, when you bump into people, when you run into people, they just put a lot of, uh, for the time, they put a lot into that game to make it really feel lived in, made it really feel realistic. So um, 
GTA 3 was one of the best uh, and most influential games to me. Uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, for the PS1. That game... A majority of that game, I'm not going to lie, my older cousin, I watched him play that game. I might have played like a couple hours. Um, but he played majority of the time because he was older than me. He didn't want to share the controller, so I didn't really have a choice, you know what I'm saying? It's like seniority. So, like, yeah, like he wasn't trying to share the controller. He wasn't trying to, like, let me play. I played for like a couple hours. But I pretty much watched him beat that game. I sat there and watched him play that game from start to finish. It took us like a week to get through it. <clears throat> and um, just the way that game utilized, like, the... The radio, like the uh, the radio system, where you had to call people on, and you had to tune into the certain frequency to call different people, uh, the mural, and then like the the whole scene with Sniper Wolf stuck with me. That boss battle with Sniper Wolf, and how you finally had to um, out snipe her, and when you hit her, like she was, and then you got to, um, basically hear her last words that she's dying. Um, Ocelot, tough battle. Um, the, the the one mission that used the, the uh, remote controlled Nikita missile. Um, mm. just stuff that you hadn't seen in this is PlayStation 1 so the graphics are pretty shit but at the time it's like they did so much with so little put it like that they did so much with so little in that game and then it was a two disc game so there was a part in that game where you had to switch disc and they even incorporated the disc switching into the story and then there's another scene like being tortured and the DualShock PlayStation controller was pretty new at that time and when you're being tortured the controller is actually rumbling and shaking as you're being electrocuted and i remember like this stuff like that i was like damn this game is next level so metal gear solid um call of duty i would say um call of duty was big for me because like Which Xbox, one, though? you can't oh, say the modern warfare modern, modern warfare the, when they first okay. went modern so it was like you know call of duty started off as a like so call of duty four one i guess it was four then right I just know it as Modern Warfare, yeah. but I guess... The one the PS3. The one, the first one the PS3. Yeah, like 2000. Like Captain Price and them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah, so yeah. Like, Call of Duty 4. Call of Duty was already like a good game. Like World War One, World War Two. they had a couple military games before, but it was all old. It wasn't really interesting to me. But um, you always heard stories about, man, this, this is like a military game called Call of Duty. It's really good, but I was like, I'm not really interested because it's like, it's not modern or whatever. But when they went modern, um, they changed the game because... Especially being a PlayStation player, because PlayStation didn't really have like blockbuster hit. Xbox did. They had Gears of War. They had Halo. PlayStation really didn't have that. I didn't have an Xbox. My neighbor had So for the first time, we got like a hit uh, multiplayer online shooter, because we didn't have Gears or Halo. And of course, Xbox had all three. That's when Xbox 360 was like on top. But yeah, so like they did a lot of things that like changing the multiplayer player shooters to this day like the kill obviously um the uavs in that game um the perks um the kill cam everything like and it's just to this day call of duty is a really big franchise because of what they did when they went modern so i have to say call of duty and just the epic like memories of just being in party chats with your friends playing call of duty and calling in kill streaks for the first time experiencing that when it first came out legendary and last but not least uh, the Last of Us, um, I think is I'm talking about the first one now. I'm not talking about the second one. The second one, yeah. eh, 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 but the first one, um, the first one de- definitely was um, something that I didn't know a video game could be. Put it like that. I didn't know a video game could be that. There's no other game like it to me to this day. That you, you've had cinematic games before, but I've never had a game where I felt like while I'm playing it or after I after I it, it, I felt like I had to, you know, talk to a therapist to really think about what just happened. It was like that deep. And I really experienced that. I have an overactive imagination as it is. I don't need, I only need much to believe it. And that game gave me a lot to, to just, um, gave me a lot to experience like fear, anxiety. Uh, what would it be like if this actually happened? And the, but the last of us, the thing that got me the most is not like what you might think. It's the notes in that game, the notes that they left behind. Like, as you're going through the world, you can find these notes about people and, um, you know, people who died and what they were doing, looking for loved ones, um, what their life was like, searching for a loved one. They were searching for the son of their daughter. They needed medicine. And you're reading these notes they left behind by these dead people, and you don't even know if you're going to make it. Like, you think you might die. So I think that's one of the most um, special and intimate things about that game are the notes. So, Last of Us. 
That's my five. All right. And just so people, just in case, so people can hear again, your top five were mm-hmm. The Last of Us, um, Mario's Nintendo 64, mm-hmm. Call of Duty 4, mm-hmm. uh, Metal Gear Solid for the PS1. Was it PS1? Mm-hmm. PS1, PS1 yeah. What was the last one? GTA 3, PS2. GTA 3, PS2. That's just, that's solid. That's solid. I left Call of Duty off. Um, oh, wow. I was thinking about it. I was really thinking about it. But these these five I put, I feel like I feel like I saw it. I do agree with Metal Gear Solid. I think that was a really good choice. That was a sneaky one. I wasn't sure if you were going to put it in or not. So, but I felt, I felt like that fit in with you. And I know how you feel about The Last of Us. So I 100% agree with The Last of Us because I already know that you have a poster for those that are on Patreon watching. Um, they earn it. They earn it. Uh, the Last of Us is really good. Uh, I thought I thought it was one of the first games where it you could really like some games you can watch you can watch walkthroughs like pretty much all, like a lot a lot of the games but like that was a game where I'm like you could really sit down and watch a walkthrough of that game like on YouTube or whatever and really feel like you're playing it like the the immersion in that game mm-hmm. was really for a PS3 I know it's been like remade to death at this point and then the TV show and all that stuff yeah, but like get it came out on PS3 bro yep for a, when it came out on the PS3 is a PS3 game like don't get me wrong Call of Duty 4 was amazing but it wasn't like and Modern Warfare 2 and all that stuff but like it wasn't like um the story wasn't so deep like that like it wasn't The Last of Us The yeah, Last the story, of Us yeah, really yeah. was the story. a story game bro like you yeah. don't get games like that like, that game is the story like uh, even now <laughs> you don't get games like that like that um, so that was really, really good. So my five, I'm going to go, so I did Super Smash Bros. Melee, Halo 2, Halo 3, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and then NBA 2K14. Okay, I'm going to okay. explain them. All right, explain but, okay, them. you got two Halos though. I do, but uh-huh. I'll, I'll explain why. I'll explain why. It was a hard choice because Halo 3 is the one I took. Halo 3 is where, where uh, so I'm going to use Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is where I was going to put with Halo, where Halo 3 is, but mm-hmm. I'll say why. So, start. let's start with NBA 2K14. The reason why I choose NBA 2K14, I'm a sports fan. I love sports games. Jordan the reason why I chose, right? I believe, yeah, yeah, it was, it was Jordan, the one Jordan yeah, yeah. cover. And the reason why I chose that is, one, that's why I graduated high school, and I was, had a whole summer before going to transition to college, and I was like, all right, I really, I really spent a lot of time gaming. Like, I spent a lot of time gaming and watching anime there during that time. And NBA 2K14, man, that's when they introduced something called the park, which is normal now. Mm-hmm. That's when they introduced the park on 2K14, where you can go, you're a creative player, and play, basically pick up basketball pick up. online. In the park. Yeah. On the park. And I played with my friend, like, nonstop. Like, we fell in love with 2K14. Like, NBA 2K14, we fell in love with the franchise, like, then. We played it before, but then that was the only time we can like we can squad up like two v twos, go play other people two v twos, go three v threes, four like whatever, play four on five v five, pick up like that was crazy. Like that moment in two K history, in sports mm-hmm. game history, really is the equivalent of like what Modern Warfare, what Call of Duty Four was in terms of like, hey, we're taking this Call of Duty franchise, which before Call of Duty you had Medal of Honor. Which was another one I was fire at the at the, P, the PS one slash PS two time, <clears throat> but what Call of Duty did, and what I'll talk about later a little later what Halo did in terms of multiplayer connectiveness and really making multiplayer uh, a real immersive thing with online communities is what Two K fourteen did because before that you weren't doing that with your creative players like not at that level so that was really cool uh, that, so that's why I had to put that there really changed stuff for me um, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time man. I mean, anyone who's anyone who's a Nintendo fanboy yeah, yeah, yeah. already knows what's even that game. Boy, like that game is like probably top ten video games ever. Well, I would say like unless you had top Nintendo, because some people started with a Switch or some people started with. Um, I mean, for grown people, for adults, yeah. like that. I feel you, but a lot of people like you know, what I'm saying video games were expensive, bro. Like we were fortunate enough to have it, but not everyone can get a Nintendo sixty four. So like, but for people who did. Or Grand Time was up there. Um, 
it, yeah. to me at the time, because I was very, very, very young, obviously, when it came out. So, like, for me, it's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, the borderline was, like, me. Anyone younger than me, it was probably the Switch or something, their first console of the Wii. But, um, so, yeah, in the sense of uh, Orkin at the time, man, it, it was, like, a horror game to me, because some of the aspects were, for a kid, some of the aspects were, like, yo, this is scary going in this cave with these spiders and, like, this volcano or this and that, like... And you're mm-hmm. by yourself, and it's not like games now. We have these cutscenes, and there's actual spe- dialogue, and there's act acting, and there's motion cap. No, it was just like a bunch of people who could not speak, <laughs> and then like you know reading stuff, and then you're going through all these horror things by yourself. And the music, the soundtrack was amazing to this day. I still bump the music. I actually bought the yeah. ocarina from the game. I have the actual ocarina in my house, so that's just how much like that's how much that meant to me, and like. Yeah, it's just one of those OG games where I felt like it blended horror with action adventure and music. Like, not just me- horror music, but, like, just so many different types of melodies and music that I felt like it just blended so many good things together that really propelled me into really loving video games even more. So, that's why I'm putting Ocarina of Time there. Now, I'm going to talk about Halo 2 and 3. I put both of those on there. This is the reason why I put both of those on there. Two, both of them served a very unique purpose, into video gaming for me and video gaming history and to me in general, which still reflects on me personally. So Halo 2 was not online like that. Like Halo 2 was on the original mm-hmm. Xbox. So it was like what, 2001, 2002? What do you mean it wasn't online? No, I know Xbox, like I know for the original Xbox, there was a online feature, but I'm trying to tell people it wasn't like Xbox Live. For people, for, for people who don't know, because not everyone is like, not, if, you have, if, we have, if a young audience is talking, like, you know, 18 year olds, 18 to like, 25 year olds right now they don't know the fuck we're talking about but um for the most part but so halo 2 wasn't online like how halo 3 was but halo 2 campaign was so freaking good man Mm -hmm. like it was one of the first games for me where split screen gameplay was a must like to really utilize like the the enjoyment of halo 2 You've got to like landline that joint, man. Like, yeah. it was to me, it was one of the best landline games, land games, period, in my yeah. opinion. Um, it was just so good, man. The, you know, you still heard that's what you, that's, and that's part of the wave where games where you started actually getting like voice actors, you start really like, they start playing a real role into breathing life into these characters, you know what I'm saying? Like, coming yeah. from a generation where it was Final Fantasy VII, um, or Legends of Ocarina of Time. You know, instead of getting, like, these noises or, like, no noise at all, like, you got characters with distinct voices that have you heard Master Chief no matter what, as long as the same dude, you're like, that's Master Chief, that's Cortana, mm-hmm. that's Johnson, like, that's, like, these characters that you really remembered. Um, and that's, yeah. to me, Halo 2 is what solidified Microsoft and Xbox as, like, a legitimate gaming company in, in that in that I think sense. Halo because, 1 did that, but yeah, no, Halo 2. Halo 1, but Halo 2, like... I'm trying to tell people combat ball was cool, but Halo Two, man, it just it to me it just changed the game because yeah. some of the stuff that you could not do in Halo One and some of the stuff that was just at the time transcendent was some of that the game like the game level design period like stuff like that like mm-hmm. Halo Two was really graphic wise too like it just for again for a console that just came out that people didn't even know about man. Like, it just was, it was bonkers. So that's why I put Halo 2 there. It's just, I still have my original case and copy of Halo 2 from, like, 2000, like, early 2000, bro. I, I just, it was one of those games. Halo 3. Because when... Was that on 360 Chat, or that was, was on Xbox, the original? 360. 360, right, yeah, yeah. Because you need, that's, cause that's when Party Chat really played a role. You had these multiplayer games where you can create levels. You can create levels, man. Like, you're telling me... I can pretend like I'm a dev. I can create a whole level and then invite my friends and we can play custom games. That's like, crazy. it was just something that's like, how did you even like, like, because mm-hmm. you, you look Halo 1 and 2. You're mm-hmm. not thinking that that's like, to take that next step and that will be your your step is where you can damn near create your own, you can, not even damn near, you can literally create your own level. Like, they provide the bare minimum that, like, that they literally need to create to basically to program it. And then you can go from there and kind of, like, create your own. You have all this. This station has Warhawks. This station has this. This station has that. You know, the energy source will be hidden here. And then you can create that whole game level, create your own game with your friends, and then jump in and play. That's revolutionary to me. Because nice. to this day that I know of, 
to it that I know of. No yeah. other game has done it like that. Now, Halo Infinite, when it launched, they um originally announced that they were going to have that feature, the creative, what is it called? Creative map or creative level feature. Yeah. But then they cut it and they said, we're going to add it in later, like in the season pass or like in the, uh, the, the roadmap. But they cut it out and then later on, maybe like a year later, they're saying, uh, oh, we, um, we had to actually cancel that update, so you're not getting it. But they tried to bring it back for Infinite, but they, they didn't. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. It's been a, I fell off of Halo for a while, obviously, but like, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know if they took it off or not. I didn't even know that, but it was, it was at the time, heavy. at the time, yeah. it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. If you had friends, you were able to play with, play it. It was just, it was yeah, so Hell yeah. cool. It was so cool. So that's why Halo Three has to go there. Obviously, the campaign was just. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was crazy. It was cra- People were buying Xbox 360s for the sole purpose. Because not everyone, again, not everyone bought Xbox. The GameCube came out there at that time. A lot of people bought the, game, bought the GameCube. A lot of people, the PS2, one of the greatest consoles of all time, was yeah. existing. Like, Xbox was they the, didn't have a Halo, the block. They didn't have no Halo. They, did, they didn't. They didn't. But a lot of people weren't going to buy Halo it for one a game. Halo juggernaut. Halo 3 was that game where people were like, because remember, you know what else came out around the time of Halo 3 that made it popular? Gears? YouTube. Oh yeah, Red versus Blue. Right. Red, yes. Yeah. And so, people were watching that and was like, bro, that's, yeah, we I need to buy, like, I was one of the people, I was a Sony fanboy, Nintendo fanboy, was like, I mean, I need an Xbox 360 immediately. I played Halo yeah, 2, bro. cool, 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 cool. But I was like, I'm not going to buy a whole, as a kid especially, I don't have my own money like that. I'm not going to go buy a whole console just for one game. No, Halo 3 was that game. Halo 3 was that game. Um, I, if, if a game is, is good enough, if a game is good enough, I will buy a console for one game. Actually, I bought the Switch for one game, Smash Brothers. I wouldn't have a Switch if Smash Brothers wasn't on Nintendo. Very true. Uh, I'm an adult now, so yeah, I would do that. But like as a child, like as like a 13, like someone whose money was not in their oh, own nah, hands yeah. really... Your parents yeah, not gonna you buy just, you two you know, Are you crazy? Yes, oh, but that console I worked hard that summer. Right, that console I was locked in, and I was to this day I'm proud. I'm one of the only people in my friend group at the time to this day that had never got the red ring of death. So, for real, shout out. Never did, man. Damn, you still got I put hours into that joint. No, oh, I traded it in for the Xbox One or something, whatever the oh, next okay. gen was after that. Um, so Halo two and three. And then lastly, Smash Bros. Melee, bro. Mm-hmm. Smash Bros. Melee. Yeah. I put so much, so many hours into that game. And this was hard because it was between this and Skyrim. Because Skyrim is the only RPG that can say I actually really love to death. But Super Smash Bros. Melee, man, made me fall in love with the series. I did play the Nintendo 64 version. I liked it. I didn't love it. Probably because I also didn't like the controls that much on the Nintendo 64 for that game in particular. But... Melee, bro, for the GameCube, to me was cool, man. It introduced so many characters I didn't know, bro. Like that's how I got into Fire Emblem, and like, um, I always obviously was a Pokemon fan, but it was really cool to see Pokemon in there, like, like extended Pokemon. Like you had a, a Star Fox and his guys, uh, Samus and Metroid. Obviously, again, yep. the Nintendo Four version, Samus but seeing it, yeah, and Captain Falcon, um, Ness, like so many iconic characters. Uh, there's a reason why, like you just said about your Switch, like there's a reason why people buy the Nintendo consoles either for Mario Party or some kind of Super Mario game, and then Mario Smash Kart. Bros. That's why Mario exactly. Kart too. Like it was like, okay, I, I might, I might buy it for Mario Kart. Maybe I'm definitely buying it for Smash. So I made Mario Kart. That's how I looked at it. There, there we go. So those, 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 that's why Melee. I mean, and the feature too. I never forget, like when you're grinding. And you're trying to unlock a character, so you like you grind, you grind, grind. Then that screen comes up with the sirens as like a character's approaching, and then yeah. as a character you really want to get. And this is before, this is before YouTube, people. This is before YouTube. Yeah. And I say this is important because this is when you had to go on your website. This is when we still had minutes on the phone. Garrett knows what I'm talking about. This is when we had minutes on the phone. I'm, ta- I'm bringing us all the way back to times that don't even that seem archaic now. How technology is. It is archaic. <laughs> there was a time. Where you had to call at a certain time uh, to not use up your house phone like that, and also your minutes and rolling and rolling coverage, all that kind. It was a different time, bro. I say all this to say, Super Smash Bros. Melee, man. You go on the website, you go on your computer. Yes, type up like 
like like you know what Reddit is like. There was more like it was like what Reddit kind of was, what kind of is, or was when it started out. Just chat rooms, basically, right? So mm-hmm. back in the day, you had to go on chat rooms to figure some games out, or you had to go get a game guide. Otherwise, like that's the only two ways. You're not going on YouTube yep. videos and watching walkthroughs. Uh, you either had an older brother or older sister. There was a little. Web, there was a website called Cheat Code Central. But yeah, go ahead. That's exactly what it is. Exactly, Cheat Code. I had game. I had Game Facts cheat or Cheat Central. Facts or something game like that. Facts. Yep. That's what I used for um the cheat codes for Grand Theft Auto, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, unlimited ammo. <laughs> unlimited ammo, unlimited health, uh, spawn car, all that good stuff. Um, or you can like, remember the cheat code in Grand Theft Auto where you can like, uh, incite basically a riot. So like every, even the citizens like really, yeah, um, yeah it was Hostile. crazy. The cheat codes are funny. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so Super Smash Bros. Melee is up there. Um, uh, it's one of the games, man. It's just, again, again another land game. Nintendo's always done that, but like Melee was like this is the first all star lineup thing that many people try to emulate. Many people, Nickelodeon, uh, Warner Brothers, Battle Royale, Playstations, um, uh, anime. Like so many people, so many companies have tried, and I'm sorry. The reason why they fail yeah. is because it's not Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not the array of characters. The the ah. small arena, the the beef man. To this day, people in college. To this day, we're in twenty twenty four. People in college, yeah. from what I heard, guy, yeah. I left in twenty eighteen. Yeah. People still play Super Smash Bros. Man, not the Switch one. Not no, yeah. definitely not the Wii one. The best. But the, people if, get if game like Samus, just to play. But Samus that. was um was the best or the strongest in melee. Like he got nerfed or she got nerfed in the later series and um she's a lot slower now she's a lot slower her speed missiles not as fast like for for a samus main melee samus is peak samus bro for sure there we go and yeah and i think melee 2 this is like a side note to me i think increased sales on a lot of their character solo games because when melee came out then you start having star fox um um solo games again on this on the gamecube you know, you obviously had that Metroid game, which was going to come out regardless, I feel like. But still, like, people played Melee and was like, oh, who's this character? Like, I want to play, like, just... And then they're like, hey, well, if you like this character, there's a whole game for this character. And then, like, you know, it just helped boost sales and uh, stuff like that. And it turned Smash Bros. into what it is now. So, I think mm-hmm. that Melee is that game. If Melee didn't succeed, you wouldn't have got one of the Wii. Uh, and you definitely wouldn't have got was what... Trash. It was. But the Wii is <laughs> it also... Was trash, bro. I, I was was so hype. We finally played it. Me and my boys, we playing it. I'm like, hold on. Did they introduce like random like slipping and falling? You remember that shit? You could just randomly fall. I like, I was yeah. like, who whose idea was that? Like, imagine a tournament, like professional, and you just slip. Like, come on, man. That was ridiculous. <laughs> so that was there's ridiculous. there's a lot of stuff for that. Um, but yeah, so those are our top fives. Um, I think we did. I think we did, for two for basically ten games. First of all, I like that we we each had different fives, which wasn't yeah. on purpose. We could have came in here with very close uh, ones, but I thought it was nice because there is an age gap between us. So I thought it would be interesting to see mm-hmm. like what your yours would be versus mine, because yours could have easily had more Super Nintendo games if you wanted to, or like more Nintendo sixty four games, because mine would have to like literally be after the like kind of after the wave. For my age, he kind of after my. I was thinking about putting the Dreamcast game on there, but I was like, eh. it was a consideration, but you know, it didn't. Make it's it. hard. I mean, I had, I had some. I had Skyrim. I had Kingdom Hearts. Like again, for mm. stuff like for me personally, those are. I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, so like those are me. Like mm. stuff like that. Um, but I was like, no, nah, I had to go Halo, Halo two and three. You know, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy could have made that joint. Uh, Metroid Prime for the GameCube could have made that joint. I feel like that was a really good game. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Mario Kart 64 definitely could have made it, but... Hell yeah, bro. Not over Mario 64, so I had to, you know... Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Like, the uh, honorable mention, like... Um, 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 honorable mention... Uh, God of War 2018 could have made it easily. God he just didn't have enough. Like ten years from 
probably will, but it didn't have enough time. Like these joints are classics, like because we know they stood the test. Twenty eighteen was too recent for me, but it, it you true. know, ask me in ten years, it'll probably be up there. God of War. I feel like yeah, God of War. God, of, I mean, yeah. I, 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 actually, now that you bring it up, so because we we about mm-hmm. wrap up the show, but I, I since you bring it, up, I'm actually am curious since we're on this subject, and this could be a whole another episode by itself. So we'll try to keep it short here, but. What is your opinion on, and again, try to keep this as short as possible. Mm-hmm. Who do you think has the best um, lineup of exclusives? It's PlayStation. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking mm-hmm. about PlayStation and Xbox. Between them two is PlayStation. Um, uh, but Nintendo just, everything Mario sells. So they got Mario Tennis, they got Mario Party, they got Mario Kart, they got Mario and Luigi, they got, you know, and then, even things without Mario, the, the Kirby's, the, the Metroid, they're coming out with the new Metroid game. So that's, so I mean, like, they're exclusives, they're exclusives, but like, they don't have much outside of the Mario family exclusives. Um, and I put like Kirby in the Mario family. I put, um, um, what's the name of that? Oh, why am I drawing a blank here? Uh, what's the Ike? Come on now. Ike, you talking about from, um, I don't play. I didn't play that. Is that is that Fire Emblem or is Ike no, some, from someone else? I'm not thinking about Ike. Or, um, anyways, but yeah, okay. The, the Mario family. I, I consider them all in the Mario family. Wario. You talking about Donkey Kong? Nah, not Donkey Kong. But Donkey, that's a good example too. Donkey Kong. So like, they don't have much outside of the Mario family that maybe like Splatoon or something like that. But um, but they don't really need to because the, the all the Mario, the quality of the Mario family games are so high and they always rates, they always sell so well. They always um, score so well, like Metacritic wise, you know, they're always at least the eight, usually the nines or tens, you know what I mean? So they don't really, the quality control is so good. They don't really need much outside of the Mario family, but I, I do kind of put an asterisk, like a knock on it a little bit because it's like, oh, it's just Mario a different way with them. But with PlayStation, um, they have a lot more variety in terms of, different um well not different genre again because playstation specializes in first person not first person um story driven cinematic um single player cinematic story driven game so like within that you know you have your horizons you have your god of war you have your ghost of tsushima you have your last of us you have your uncharted you have your um spider-man you have your um, da, 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 what else do you have? Ratchet and Clank. Like the list goes on. Like Astro, Astrobot. Now they even introduce him. So you have a lot more variety. It's not like they're all uh, spawning from one character or one franchise. Like they have a lot more variety. But in um, PlayStation and Nintendo, if I were to compare like the Mario family versus everything Sony has, who would I put in front? Damn, that's a hard one. It's like. It's it's a different way to skin a cat. You can do it this way or that way. Like, I can't say one is better than the other. It's just different. You know what I mean? It's just different. I'll say this. I'll say this. I, I, I'm going I'm going to be the grump in the room. I'm gonna make a decision. I'll make a winner. All right. I am going with Sony. As I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. There's a reason for this. One. Nintendo been making games for a minute, so don't get it twisted. Nintendo I'll think about Pit for a minute. But go ahead, Pit. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, for a minute. But the reason why I'm giving Sony the edge, and this is going to be something that can always really be ongoing. But the reason why I give this to Sony right now is because I think that Sony saw, okay, especially early Sony saw, we're not going to be Nintendo. We're just not not we're not going to be them. Okay. Because again, the early games you listen to one of them, uh, Metal Gear Solid would never. Snake is on a Smash Bros. game for some reason, but other than that, he would. You're not there. You're not getting something like that from Nintendo, which is fine. They're not. That's not their wheelhouse. They don't care. Like they're they're doing their thing. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But Sony has always not only have they pushed it with the narrative uh, games, but they've had to do it with their hardware as well, because. Yes, like imagine The Last of Us, which is a great story regardless and all that stuff. But imagine with graphics of like, you know what I mean? Like, like imagine with like PS2 graphics in, in the time of in the time of the PS3 slash PS4. Like 
that's my problem with Nintendo. And I know that sounds like it's two different issues, but to me it's not because, again, you have to evolve. The fact that they're willing always to evolve their hardware and their graphical capability and push it to the limits for their games is what makes their what helps makes their games to that next level of not only like ingenuity but also just like you're not gonna forget it. Like despite the reception of The Last of Us Part Two, it was a gorgeous ass video game. I it like was a that game, gorgeous bro. Gorgeous game. I'm a fan of that game. I just think they should have made a few different decisions. That's all I'm trying to say. But all well, in girls, all, yeah, that game was the shit. It was yeah. a very beautiful game. Yes, and they they had to do that. Not had to, but you know what I mean. Like they they, they did it because they're like, yeah, what's the point of making this a different, like, a really good game like that, but not pushing the boundaries of how it can look. Like I want this to be an, an experience because when you make it something like that, it's like it it, it doesn't that other old games couldn't do as well because of the graphics. It's like these things look so realistic now that mm-hmm. you can really immerse yourself into these worlds, and yeah. they don't just they, and they don't sacrifice story for the sake of that. Like it could be easy just to be like, oh, it looks realistic, but the story's ass. No, no, they're like we need our stories to be here, and our graphics to be to meet it. It has mm-hmm. to, or else what's the point? And I like that approach because I feel like you can keep pushing the boundaries of what video games can become. I mean, there's another poster you have if you are watching that's Uncharted. The Uncharted series has done stuff as well. The Uncharted series could have easily been on this list. It's done a lot for video games in general, like uh, especially Uncharted 4. That's a gorgeous video game, bro. Mm-hmm. And gorgeous to video games. To this day, a very gorgeous video game. So you have these games, man. And, and Sony also, the voice actors. Like they, that's the thing. Like they implement so many elements into what modern game making is now. The voice actors, the motion captures, the environments. Like they, like I said, they, they're basically making movies except video games. That's literally yeah, what yeah. they're doing. Especially, it's with not easy. Yep. God of War, uh, twenty eighteen. God of War Ragnarok. Come on now. Very gorgeous video. From what from what the game used to be in conception of it mm-hmm. to what they made it now with the transition. Um, is crazy, and the original games are all fucking amazing. But I'm saying, like, to make it what it is now, it's different. It's, different. <laughs> it's just different. So that's why I'm giving the edge. And there's no knock on Nintendo; they make amazing games. But let's be honest: like a lot of these games, as successful as they are, they're always going to sell. But it's pretty much okay. Here's Mario Kart from a lot of these Nintendo 64 games. How do we just tweak it and modernize it? To, no, Sony's like, how do we make it. an experience? Like, how do we make that you never different, had before. like different like games that like, came out of nowhere ghost of tsushima ghost of tsushima i was like what's this gonna yeah. be like and then i played gorgeous it gorgeous ah, wow yeah. game yeah and there's been like two three games that try to copy that john couldn't do it <laughs> yeah man and so you see that uh black myth wukong i know that's not exclusive but you know what i, I mean like good. i haven't played it yet but i heard it was good. i haven't played it either but like just you can't run that on that's nothing you can't run that kind of game on uh, nintendo would blow up bro it'd become a bomb so yep. you have things like that it where it's like, too, yeah, yeah, we'll see, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, yeah, so that's why I give it to that. But anyway, that being said, we appreciate y'all for listening, man. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Garrett doing his thing again. Good list. I really like that you put Metal Gear Solid in there. I think that's a sleeper, I and I hope they. I don't know if they've really done it like that, but they really need to like revamp that franchise, bro. Like. I know because Kojima, I, I know the situation with all that, but like, at least remaster it. Like, there's some games, there's some ga- people don't understand. A lot of these remaster, remaster, remaster stuff, they have a whole cow. Cal- there's a whole catalog of PS2 games mm-hmm. that if they ever got remastered, bro, they would chart again. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people forgot. A lot of people weren't even alive for those games that are gaming now, especially, um, and also they've just been forgotten about. There's a lot of games, man. I'm talking about Midnight Club. I'm talking about, like, there's so many games, bro, that have just not seen the light of day ever again um, that they got remastered or the continue the franchise. And I think that would be a good way to revitalize the gaming community and video games is to bring, not only just remastered, but, like, just bring it back. Like, hey, like basically how they did with God of War, just, like, revitalize the franchise. I think there's a lot of PS2 games, man. Like, what's that one with the clown? They made a TV show off of it now, but what's the one with the, uh, the Twisted Metal? Twisted Metal, yeah. I'm very, like... There's some very, there's a lot of games. The PS2 catalog is deep. P- PS2 catalog is probably the deepest of any of any generation, in my opinion. Probably. I'm not gonna lie to you. Because that's that's a, you, you get the imagine that's peak Capcom, bro. 
That's mm-hmm. peak Capcom was PS2 era. Like wow. Capcom with the uh, Devil May Cry um, franchise, Mega Man franchise, Street Fighter. Like, I know they're still making some, like, but you know, it wasn't like, like, trust me, like, PS2 stuff, like, it was like that. There's a reason why that, that console sold what it did, bro. Like, there's a lot of games that, if they ever brought to live day, I mean, we don't, we still don't have a, like, we don't have a Mega Man. Like, Mega Man just kind of died for some reason. <laughs> so, it's like, there's so many games that just died. Never been like, really came back. Mega Man. I don't think. Never. And they just refused not to, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, y'all. See y'all on the next one. Peace out.